All right, and we're back <clears throat> in the body of Christ America. Looks like we're on chapter 9, God Promises to Noah. So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. I wonder what multiply means. Okay. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth and on every bird in the air, on all that move on the earth. And on all the fish of the sea. So I guess that's why all the animals are afraid of us. They are given into your hand. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs. Nice. But you shall not eat of the flesh with its life. That is, its blood. Uh-oh. Some people like to do that. They like their steak bloody. Surely, for your lifeblood... I will demand a reckoning. From the hand of every beast, I will require it. And from the hand of man, from the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of man. Wow. And I guess that's the, the sacrifice that we used to have to do to atone for our sins. Whoever sheds a man's blood by the man, by man, his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God, he made man. So we're all image bearers. We hold the image of God, all of us. As for you, be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply. Very nice. They must have been hard at work. Tell you what. And God spoke to Noah and said to his sons with him, saying, As for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, that's us, and every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth, of all that should go out of the ark, every beast of the earth. Very nice. Thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. Well, he's held up to his promise so far. I'm not saying he's going against it, but very nice. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I make <clears throat> between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in a cloud and it shall be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Wow, that's what the rainbow was for. And what have we turned the rainbow in town now? Today, what does a rainbow mean? Hmm. It, it, it shall be, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. The water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Very good. And he's given us a rainbow to remind us of this covenant he made with us. The rainbow shall be in a cloud. I will look onto it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh on the earth. Very nice. Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark, Shane, Ham, and Japheth, Japheth, and Ham was the father of Canaan, Canaan. Uh, these were the three sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. So that's where we come in. And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk, and became uncovered in his tent. Now, well, you know, there was a flood and stuff, you know, he just had to maybe go out and party. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty, you know, you're the only people in the world, you know. So I guess with his vineyard, he made wine, fermented it, got drunk. There you go. And Ham, the father of Canaan, Cain, Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shame and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both of their shoulders, and he went backward and covered the nakedness of his father. 
Well, you know, we've all had our weak points, right? Uh, their faces were turned away. They did not see their father's nakedness. Yeah, that's a sight that no, no man wants to see his father naked, right? So Noah awoke from his wine and knew that his younger son had done to him. Then he said, Cursed to be Canaan, the a servant of servants, he shall be to his brethren. And he said, Bless the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years. So all the days of Noah were 950 years, and then he died. Well, that was a story of Noah. He went through a lot, and uh, it doesn't really say if he got drunk again after those 350 years. Maybe he did. Maybe he learned from his shame. Like I said, we've all had moments we don't want to live over again, but... <coughs> We'll have to see what happens next. Looks like Noah's out of the picture. We already lost, what, all of society? Adam, Eve, and now Noah. Now we're left with the sons to be fruitful and multiply the earth. But in the 350 years, you know, what? who knows what happened, right? I guess only God knows. Well, that's it for this time, and we will see you next time in... The Saga, which is the Bible, chapter 10, Genesis 1. Thank you. Winnable.